Welcome to the Monday, October 3rd, 2022 session of the Lake Forest City Council. Will the city count, uh, city clerk please call the roll? Certainly. Honorable Mayor Pandelian. Here. Alderman Norris. Here. Alderman Novit. Here. Alderman Rommel. Here. Alderman Notes is absent. Alderman Fleshlock. Here. Alderman Gashgarian. Here. Alderman Bushman. Here. Alderman Weber. Here. Thank you. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thanks everybody for joining us tonight and all the people out in uh, television land. Uh, first item on the agenda is comments by the mayor and uh, we have a couple of items tonight. First, I'd just like to acknowledge the uh, role of the Chamber of Commerce in putting together the Lake Forest Car Show yesterday. Uh, if any of you attended, it was fabulous. I mean, the, the collection of vehicles and art was unbelievable. It was very well attended. There was great food, there was great music, people were dancing. Uh, it was just really a fun time. And I think these things, you know, they develop a, a reputation and a life of their own over time. And uh, I'm told that now uh, they're turning cars away because there just isn't enough space for all the people that want to participate. So um, congratulations to the chamber, to all the sponsors, um, and to all the participants uh, and the uh, and to the to the cars, the two cars that won the mayor's trophy. So, <clears throat> but it was a great time, and the weather certainly cooperated in a big way. Uh, next, I have a resolution of appreciation for the Lake Forest Day Foundation President Art Wood. Uh, let me read the resolution. Uh, Whereas Art Wood has devoted much available time and personal attention to the work of the Lake Forest Day Foundation as its president since 2007 on behalf of the citizens of Lake Forest and, continu and continually met his responsibilities with purpose and dedication. Whereas Art Wood brought quick wit and a good nature as a positive force to collaborate with the American Legion celebrating Lake Forest Day. Whereas the citizens of Lake Forest recognize and are deeply appreciative of the valuable time and service he contributed to the preservation and improvement of the Lake Forest Day celebration in our community by serving on the Lake Forest Day Foundation now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Lake Forest, Illinois, on behalf of the administration and residents of the community, hereby expresses the profound gratitude of the citizens of Lake Forest to Art Wood for the loyal and faithful public service he has given by means of this resolution, which shall be spread upon the permanent records of the City Council. I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, there being none, the motion is approved. Congratulations. Are you interested in a quick photo op? <laughs> Can you go to the yeah, mic? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you all very much. It's very kind of you to do this. Um, yeah, in a sec, Jack. <laughs> this is just like our meetings. <laughs> volunteerism 
in Lake Forest. As a young kid, he was growing up and remembered the parade and the carnival, and so he gladly stepped forward to fill a much-needed role as president. Thank you, Art, for all you've done for the community and for the foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. And he just said what I was going to say. <laughs> so I will just, he's right. I've been going to Lake Forest Day since I was four years old, 25 years ago. <laughs> and um, I remember throwing ping pong balls into little bowls of goldfish and then bringing the goldfish home when you got the ping pong ball in the bowl. So when Jack and Howard Adams and others talked about putting this together, I immediately raised my hand, and it's been a great pleasure uh, to see, to work with the Legion, to work with people like Debbie and Jack, and to see Lake Forest Day continue to thrive. That's our goal. So thank you. Yeah. Well, Thank you. I think uh, the foundation has been a critical cog in keeping Lake Forest Day thriving and, and progressing through the years, bringing that extra, that extra oomph of manpower and a little bit of money to, uh, uh, to help the, uh, to the American Legion keep it all going. So, and I, uh, I congratulate Debbie on her uh, stepping into your very large shoes. So, uh, the next thing we have since we, I believe, still have the former mayor on the phone, is a resolution of appreciation recognizing emeritus status, the emeritus status of Jack Preschlack related to the Lake Forest Day Foundation. <clears throat> so I'll read this resolution. Whereas Lake Forest resident Jack Preschlack has lived in the city of Lake Forest for 45 years, Whereas the Lake Forest Day Foundation was founded by Art Wood, Jack Preschlack, Willard Bunn, Howard Adams, Bud Turner, and David Nash from the American Legion, and early supporters, the Stuart McKenzie and other Lake Forest families in 2007, all civic leaders in their own right. As Lake Forest Day was approaching its 100 year anniversary, and whereas Lake Forest Day Foundation's mission then and now is to safeguard and ensure that the Lake Forest Day celebrations will occur well into the future, and that the American Legion, who so tirelessly run Lake Forest Day for the community, have the support and financial means necessary to, don't, to continue this important and valued community event. And whereas Jack Preschlack stepped up early in its founding to be the foundation's chief fundraiser, calling all of his friends in the community to reinforce the vital mission of the Lake Forest Day Foundation and to help secure Lake Forest Day for the future, with initial fundraising efforts culminating in an epic black tie celebration at Lake Forest Beach, celebrating the 100th anniversary of Lake Forest Day, with hundreds of Lake Foresters and Gary, Sinise, the Lieutenant, Gary Sinise's The Lieutenant Dan Band playing to a full house. And whereas through the decades, Lake Forest Day Foundation has continued to uphold the tra tradition of Lake Forest Day. And whereas the Lake Forest Day Foundation is a true community partner annually supporting the American Legion with Lake Forest Day celebrations. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Lake Forest that the Council, on behalf of the entire community, hereby expresses its sincere appreciation and gratitude to the Lake Forest Day Foundation and, foundation and founding member Jack Preschlack for a public service faithfully performed, and be it further resolved that the City Clerk be and hereby is instructed to deliver a copy of this resolution duly signed by the mayor to the Lake Forest Day Foundation on, its thir on this third day of October 2022. I would wow. suggest a photo op, Jack, but that wouldn't work right now. So. Thank you so much. I'm honored. So congratulations. Um, next time you're in town, we'll have the photo op. Okay, that's the deal. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members of the council. Well, well deserved. Move to adopt the resolution. We do need to move a move a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations, Jack, and thanks for all your service. <laughs> Would you like to say anything more? 
Okay. Mr. Mayor, I believe Debbie Saran was here to accept on his behalf. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. But let's do the photo out when you ask Yes, no question. <laughs> Sounded like it. Oh, yeah. Do you want to do one with the council? Yeah. But we could do one with art in front of the council. Do you want to do art with the council to take a photo? I don't know. Debbie's going to say a few words. It is a great honor for me to acknowledge the important role that Art Wood and Jack Preschlack played in the inception of the Lake Forest Day Foundation, and I'd like to thank the members of the council for honoring them both today. Without their leadership in 2007 and 2008, as well as securing donations from key members of the community, we would not be here today. The Lake Forest Day celebration is part of our collective history, and we are grateful to Art, Jack, Mayor Mike Rummel, and all those who helped ensure that this celebration would continue in perpetuity. It is also an excellent and incredibly important way to support our American Legion, who work tirelessly to, tirelessly to make sure this tradition continues. The mission of the foundation is to support Lake Forest Day and the Legion in keeping our honored tradition alive. Again, on behalf of the Lake Forest Day Foundation, congratulations to Art Wood and Jack Preschlack, and thank you for all you have done and hopefully will continue to do as Emeritus members. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. All right, let, why don't you come up and we'll have a picture with you and the entire council. Group photo. A group photo. Group photo. <clears throat> Yeah, just. We need to get the photographer back. He'll be back. I can do that. <laughs> be careful. You can't stand behind art. Or you'll I'm be not standing behind art. Well, it all depends on where Bill's going. <laughs> That's up to the photographer. Yeah, it's a good thing. I'll be on my toes, though. We can get in a little closer. Maybe if you come over this way and the mayor moves that way over. Thank you. All right. Great. Whoops. Thank you very much. Thanks for everything. Good to see you. I know the foundation's in very good hands with Debbie. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you all. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda for me is to announce the winners of the How Well Do You Know Lake Forest Trees Dialogue Contest. On the back of the fall dialogue is a How Well Do You Know Lake Forest Trees Contest with these three images of the trees in Lake Forest. And we asked residents to identify the tree species with the help of the tree map. Uh, I'm wondering if anybody on the council can identify these trees. Anybody want to take a try? Our, our, res, our resident horticulturist. Put me on the spot. I'll, I'll defer to the winners. <laughs> that was a good move. Well, the correct answers are the first one on the left is a service berry. The second, is, the middle is a Norway spruce. And the third is a Freeman maple. And from all the correct entries yeah some of us could just say that's a maple tree right yeah, but right. The, not not a not a freeman maple though i would have said a norway maple and that would have been <laughs> <laughs> so from from no, all the scary, yeah. from all the correct entries we drew one lucky winner 
And the winner is Evan Teske. So congratulations, yeah. Evan. <laughs> You've won some uh, Lake Forest swag that you can stop by and pick up at City Hall anytime. Except make sure that it's open. It's open. <laughs> so congratulations. It's nice to have this kind of little element of fun and, uh, and education yeah, it's a great idea. In, the, in the dialogue. So uh, Next, we have uh, comments by the city manager, but um, I would like to point out that in recent, in really in the last two weeks, the city has been the recipient of three very prestigious national awards, um, which you'll be hearing about at subsequent meetings. We're here tonight to talk about the first one, uh, which has to do with the LF Now app as a uh, national recognition for communications and service delivery. Uh, the other that we won a national award for is the Rethink Recycling campaign, which we'll be dealing uh, or talking about at our next meeting. And then the third um, is the city won uh, what's called the, uh, the Triple Crown of Financial Reporting. So we won national awards for our budget, for our, uh, for our budget document, our comprehensive annual financial report, and also for the popular annual financial report that uh, if uh, anybody has taken the time to look on our website to see is really extremely accessible and, and understandable and, and uh, really you know, goes a long way toward demystifying the whole, the whole government accounting uh, process. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jason uh, to call up the requisite staff, and then we'll uh, present a little, a little trophy. Sure, thank you very much, Mayor, and again, appreciate the opportunity um, to give credit and recognition to the staff who've been behind some of these initiatives, not just tonight, but as you said, in the next uh, couple of council meetings as well, and I th think it's no surprise for the city council to hear me regularly praise just the exceptional staff we have here with the city, but it's nice, uh, while, we, while we know the job they do, it is always nice to see an affirmation of that and to see staff recognized by their peers as really leaders within their industry in, in a variety of different disciplines. So uh, tonight, I'm happy to introduce uh, to, uh, to the podium, Jim Shaw, our Director of Innovation and Technology, and Dana Olson, our Communications Manager. They've done an exceptional job in continuing to utilize the, the mobile app uh, as a useful tool for service delivery and for communications with the residents. And before or after your choosing mayor, uh, the photo op, I have asked them to just provide a brief update on some, uh, some analytics regarding utilization of the app and to just share a, a, a quick uh, view of what may be coming for the app in the, in the coming year or so. But with that, I'm happy to introduce both of them and welcome them to the podium. Thank you very much, Jason. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of City Council. We, IT Director Jim Shaw and I are excited to be here tonight to just give a little update on what's new with the app. And if you haven't downloaded the Lake Forest Now app, make sure you do so. We'll have a QR code up on the screen at the end of the presentation. So if you don't have it, make sure you get it. Um, but the, some updates on utilization and analytics. On, up on the screen, there's a little scrolling video that shows what it looks like if you're going through the app. It's a little glitchy up there. It's, it's much smoother if you actually have it on your own phone. Um, but since the app launched last year, we've had over 4,000 downloads, which is pretty impressive given the size of our community. Downloads are important, but we're more interested in ongoing use. And so we look at average selections for the app. And so that's, if you're looking up at the screen, those little buttons, anytime anybody pushes one of those, that counts as a selection. And so the summer is when we see peak use, uh, which isn't surprising given, given our most popular selections are the beach, beach parking availability, water conditions, that sort of thing. But we've seen a peak in the summer and um, continue to see consistent use of the app. 
So what's new with the app? This year we launched a live map with beach parking availability that shows, it's an animated map that shows you how many parking spots are available. So it's great before you load up your beach bag and head down to the beach to see um, what parking is available. We also launched a sports camera evaluation program at Everett Park. And so there's a little video here that shows what you can see live in the app during games, but also you can watch after the fact. So it's been great for players to watch. Coaches love it. We've received really good feedback from baseball families. Uh, it's great if you, you know, can't make it to your kid's game. You can watch the game in the app or grandparents or relatives who are out of town can still have a chance to catch those games live or recorded after the fact. And then we've also launched links with our push notifications. So the app has a push notification function and we've expanded on that by including links to web pages. And so this morning we sent out a notification about this meeting and we were able to link that notification to the agenda. So instead of people having to go somewhere else to find it, they can just open the message on their phone and see what um, more information on that topic. What's next for the app? There's that QR code. If you don't have it yet, you can scan that. I tried it from here earlier and it worked. So depending on where you are in the room, you can still um, scan the QR code. But we're looking to refresh the look and feel of the app, make sure that we're staying consistent with what users are looking for and matching best practices with the industry and what apps are looking like. Um, also enhancing the push notification function so that we can have a little more information on how people are using the app and when they're opening those push notifications. And that ties into improving analytics so we have a little bit more data on use so that we can customize the app more to what people are looking for. And one of the features we're hoping to add is being able to see when people are opening push notifications so then we can decide when the right time of day to send those is so that we make sure we're getting um, the best open rate and interaction that we can. That was really quick. Um, <laughs> quick look at what, what's new and what's ahead, but I invite you to ask any questions if you have those. Can yeah. you send a QR code so I can send it to other people that uh, should have this, may not have it already? Okay. Sure, yeah, I can. Send it along. Yeah, yes, I can circulate. All of us. That would yeah. be great. Yeah, I can circulate that around because it's, um, we, hit that 4,000 mark for downloads, but we, there's people who don't have it and we wanna make sure that, that they do. So I can definitely circulate some information. Alderman Rummel. Yes, Alderman Rummel. Oh, can you just tell me what a push notification would look like? What might it be? What might be a topic? Sure, great question. So on your phone, if you have any like news apps or weather apps, <coughs> those are the little buttons that pop up or the little like text that pops up and says there's a news story or something like that. So it shows up on your screen. I wish I had um, an example to show you, but it's there's a limited number of characters that we can put in there, but it's a chance, like the one for the meeting tonight, we said there's a city council meeting um, tonight at 6.30, open for details. And so we have limited characters we can include in there, but we can promote meetings, we can promote upcoming events, we use it a lot for that. Oh, nice. Construction notifications, it's a chance to say, hey, Deer Path Road is gonna be closed, <laughs> open for details. Yeah. So yeah. it's a great yeah. way to get, when people are in the app, they're, we have all this information for them to find, but it's a way to direct them to get mm -hmm. in the app. So and it would also, show up on our phones and on our, I mean, I get it on the bottom of my computer all the time, those little, boxes with the app and maybe I'll ask um, Jim to weigh in on that I think the app if you have it on your mobile device or on a tablet it would work but I don't think it correct it'll work on mobile devices or tablets uh, it's important though when you download the application that you say I do accept uh, notifications that'll be the first question that you're asked so if you're not getting notifications today I would encourage you to go ahead and delete the app and re-download it and accept the notifications great mm -hmm. thank you and you can pick your subjects that you want to get notifications about, too. You don't Correct. have to take them all or nothing. Correct. Any other questions or comments? Well, speaking for myself, I'm a big big devotee of this app. It's uh, I, I use it for a lot of things. My favorite thing is there's a pothole in the middle of mm -hmm. you know Green Bay Road, mm -hmm. and uh, you can just <clears throat> snap a picture of it and send it to, and it goes directly to the appropriate person 
on the staff, so it doesn't have to wind its way through the bureaucracy. It just goes right to that person. And uh, my experience is they're usually on those things in a matter of hours, if not minutes. But maybe that's because it's coming from the mayor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll, call, yeah, I'll do it as John Smith and see what happens. <laughs> Well, thank you but for it's been great. Work. It's a great yeah. step forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, don't let them leave without a chance for a photo op. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes my report for this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is an opportunity for citizens to address the City Council on non-agenda items. Uh, if there's anybody, I have a couple of cards here for people that would like uh, to speak. Uh, the only request I would make is that you step up to the, to the podium, uh, adjust the microphone so you're speaking into the microphone. Uh, please take no more than three minutes and uh, introduce yourself and your address and uh, uh, and if somebody says what you were going to say uh, and you still want to get up and speak please just come up and say i agree with the person who just spoke in front you know just before me instead of going through it all over again uh first person on who submitted a card is uh alia atar <clears throat> well, we generally don't do presentations, but um, but you're free to speak. Okay. Uh, she has flyers. Hello, we are coming here tonight as citizens of this community. My name is Aliyah Attar, and I'm president of the Lake Forest High School Human Rights Club. Today, I'm here with Sophia Zar, our Vice President at the Lake Forest Human Rights Club. Today, we're representing change makers and strong leaders. We're both involved students, involved with our school's choir, Special Olympics, and um, members of our art club executive board. Our Human Rights Club is made up of seniors through freshmen. We are here to talk about what happened with our homecoming windows in both 2021 and 2022 and the impact that it has had on our community. In 2021, we painted the windows of a local business, including a pride flag. And to our understanding, it was due to customer complaints for it to be removed the next day. In 2022, again, our window mural was censored due to the symbols of yet another pride flag and the slogan BLM. As citizens of this community, we believe that it is our duty to share what has happened so our community is aware of the situation. With that being said, I want to introduce our club's mission statement. To promote inclusion and equity through awareness, advocacy, and outreach in our community and beyond. We feel that this aligns with the City of Lake Forest's mission statement, which states to be an appealing community and promote a community of spirit of trust, respect, and citizen involvement. In order for our community to fully achieve this mission, we must be aware of the events that have unfolded in the past week. As members of the Lake Forest community, we are participating in civic engagement and standing up for what we believe is to be right. Participating in window painting for the second time after last year's erasure, we were shocked to see this happen to our community once again, two years in a row. After our 2022 windows were censored, we as a club decided to take down the entire window painting as it did not represent our club or what we stood for. It was a censored message. We were shocked and disheartened to see our painting had been erased a second time and felt defeated by the culture of censorship, a culture that does not welcome all. 
Our core values do not feel represented after these events have unfolded, and neither do the minority groups depicted in the mural, such as the LGBTQ plus community and people of color. Within our community in school, there are families of color, and there are people who are part of the LGBTQ plus community, and they are hurt by this narrative. They are hurt by the mural erasure. We hope to change the narrative around diversity and inclusion in our community. The symbols that our club painted on both windows represented love and inclusion, and we want them not only to be tolerated, but welcomed in our community. Censorship is a huge issue in our world right now. It is absolutely not in the best interest of our home, as it does not seem to foster or promote of a community of spirit of trust, respect, and citizen involvement, as stated in the City of Lake Forest mission statement. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Sophia Czar. Hello, I am Sophia Czar, Vice President of the Human Rights Club. I'm also a member of choir, Special Olympics, Big to Little's mentoring program, and art club. And I have two younger siblings that will eventually be headed to Lake Forest High School. Thank you all for your service in our community, and thank you for having us here today. This Saturday, in response to the events of 2021 and 2022, our Human Rights Club decided to host a community day, inviting all community members into our school. We wanted to use the support and momentum our club was gaining online, um, centered around the human rights issues in a positive way. We um, recommended nonprofit organizations to support, books to read, and committed actions to take to the community that showed up to our community day. It was an afternoon of discussion and processing, but also one of action. The turnout was inspiring. Children and adults alike engaged in heartfelt discussions, created posters that championed messages of inclusion, and made bracelets that represented the warmth and positive energy that our club promotes. Community Day was a success, and we hope to make it an annual event. It opened both dialogue as well as compassion, representing our club's very best side, rather than the intolerance held by a minority in this community. We love this community. We think there's such an opportunity here to become a more unified, further accepting, and kinder place for marginalized groups in Lake Forest. There's also a real risk to continuing to allow antiquated messages of intolerance to be linked with Lake Forest. As our neighboring cities in Lake County grow more accepting, Lake Forest lags behind. Are we really a community so resistant to the idea of acceptance, or is this vocal minority writing our community's false narrative? How can we make this a safer and more inclusive space for groups who feel unseen in Lake Forest? We are here today to ask you all, how can we use this moment to reflect, learn, and move forward so that this does not happen again? We look forward to hearing and partnering with you to create the best possible solutions to ensure we are living up to the Lake Forest mission and making this a town that we are all proud to represent. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. Are there any, thank you, are there any other members of the public that would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item? Okay, well thank you for your comments. Um, just to clarify, the city is not, has not, is not involved in the uh, homecoming festivities and the window painting. Uh, that's really something that's done between the school and private businesses. Uh, speaking for myself, I'm very disappointed that a very small number of very vocal people have uh, made such, a, such an issue of this. Uh, it's, it's distressing. Uh, Lake Forest works very hard to be uh, as as welcoming and as inclusive as we can be. And uh, we have something on the order of 1,300 new families that have moved here in the last two years out of a total of seven, roughly 7,000. So as a percentage, it's very, very large. And uh, we are working hard to welcome all those people and their children uh, into our community. So um, if there are specific actions that you're interested in having the city consider, uh, what I would do is refer you to the city staff, and uh, they will, uh, I, I, Jason, I, I probably have Dana or somebody, uh, you know, Sure, yeah, connect. Uh, we'd be happy to, to hear your suggestions. Dana Olson, our communications manager, could perhaps exchange contact information with you um, just as we finish public comment. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, next items on the agenda are items for omnibus vote consideration. Uh, we have four tonight. Uh, first is approval of the September 6th, 2022 City Council meeting minutes. Second is approval of the check register for the period of August 27th to September 23rd, 2022. Third is consideration of a request to waive the fidelity bond requirements in connection with the holding of a raffle in the City of Lake Forest for the Women's Board of Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital and Northwestern Medicine Lake Forest Hospital. That's an approval by motion. And fourth is consideration of ordinance approving, ordinances approving recommendations from the Building Review Board. First reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. Are there any items here that any member of the Council would like considered separately or, uh, uh, or, or removed? Okay, uh, in that case, I would entertain a motion to approve. So Second. Uh, okay, a roll call vote, please. Alderman Gashmirian. Aye. Alderman Bush. Aye. Alderman Weber. Aye. Alderman Morris. Aye. Alderman Novit. Aye. Alderman Fresh Aye. Alderman Fresh Aye. Seven yay, zero nay, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, any uh, comments by council members uh, or items for discussion? Okay, uh, then the next item on the agenda is, I'm sorry, were you? No. Okay, I, I thought I picked up arm. a, okay, sorry. It's like being at an auction. You don't have to be careful about what you're. you're right. Uh, uh, the next item I would ask for is a motion to adjourn into executive session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 2C1. The city council will be discussing personnel. So what? moved. Uh, second. second, please, and then I need a roll call vote. Aye. Alderman Weber. Aye. Alderman Morris. Aye. Alderman Novit. Aye. Alderman Rommel. Aye. Alderman Freshland. Aye. Alderman Gushmarian. Aye. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion carries. Okay. Well, uh, uh, just can you clarify? Will there will we be reconvening into anything? And do you anticipate any action being taken if we no. reconvene? Okay, no, there will be you. no action taken after the uh, executive session. We will reconvene into regular session simply for the purpose of adjourning the regular session. So. Uh, for anybody in the audience, I don't see anybody. No. Anybody watching on television? Um, <laughs> don't hit, don't the, come running. There's not. Yeah, there's there's not going to be anything else. So uh, <laughs> you can uh, you can call it uh, call it an evening. So um, so we will now adjourn into the other room uh, for executive session.